Good afternoon, everyone. And now that you are welcome to the session of the new perspective in CTO PCI. Today, we are talking about the specific of the CTO PCI and I am a, a moderator, Dr. Yamane. And today we like to have a distinguished panel for the uh, CTO arena, Dr. Masayuki from Germany and Dr. Knappen from the Holland. Today, uh, we talk about the, uh, some recent advances for the CTO PCI. So I'd like to talk about the, uh, some uh, specific history of the CTO technique as well as developmental history. As you know, over these 20 to 15 years, we have been struggling for the CTO PCI, but at the same time, we can achieve a great number of success among them some of the technical aspect of the development we have achieved to close to or more than 90% of the procedure success rate and less than uh, three or 2% of the major mortality as well as complication rate. At the same time, we shouldn't forget about some technical as well as a technological development such as a guide wires and microcatheters. And today we have enough time to go into the detail and the first presentation by the uh, uh, Paul Knappen uh, for is uh, uh, one of the best pioneers of the CTO PCIs in uh, Europe as well as whole world. Today he's talking about the uh, guide wire and uh, likely to talk. And today's session objective will be that if you want to have uh, some skill set as well as the understanding of the uh, CTO PCI. Probably this is the best session to come. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, Dr. Yamane, for this kind introduction. Uh, so I'd like to talk about the new perspective in guide wire selection, uh, but also some of the, the characteristics of the old guide wire selection. Um, I have nothing to disclose pertaining to the contents of this talk. Uh, by way of background, I'd like to tell you that we all know that CTOs are pretty common. We find them in one in five patients with obstructive coronary disease. Yet uh, wiring has been traditionally with, with low success rate of about 60% with integrate wiring, even in selected populations. So in general, we offer these patients less frequent percutaneous interventions and more frequent bypass surgery. However, as Dr. Yaman has alluded to, the advances in wire technology and in, in, in the retrograde wire access have now tremendously increased um, uh, the success rate. So I'd like to talk about the advances in the wire technology. So um, uh, not all CTOs are equal. On the left-hand side, you see a CTO which is um, um, quite simple with a microchannel. CT shows soft plaque with a microchannel. On the right-hand side, we see a heavily calcified long CTO. And you can, you can imagine that the left-hand side CTO needs a different wire to tackle than the right-hand CTO. So not all CTOs are equal and different wire for different purposes are very important. And we notice also from the, from the JCTO score, if your JCTO score is very low, the chances of anti-grade wiring with soft polymer jacketed wires are extremely high. However, when your JCTO score goes up, success rate of wiring goes down, and you need different types of wires with different levels of JCTO scores and also different strategies. So which wire to choose? Well, not so long ago, we have a myriad of wires from multiple vendors, and it was really uh, undistinguishable which wire to choose, which we generally um, have this scheme which um, on uh, between the tip load and, and the support. And, and luckily, over the last couple of years, this has been tremendously simplified, predominantly due to the introduction of the SIA or YE family over the last decade or so. And now we are um, generally distinguish the start of the CTO procedure with soft polymer jacketed wires like the Fielder XTA and the Fielder XTR. And if that doesn't work, you go to an intermediate type of wires, predominantly with the Gaia family, and now with the new iteration of the Gaia Next family, which is available in Japan, but not yet in, in other parts of, of the world. Uh, also still around is the Ultimate Bros 3. And then a new introduction is the stiff polymer jacketed wires. A pilot-like uh, wire is the Gladius. I'll, I'll tell you about that a little bit later. And if that doesn't work, you have sti stiff penetrative wires like the Confianza Pro 12 family. So so basically, three types of sorts of wires, which you can tackle most of the CTOs, and your uh, your toolbox, they only have to encompass these. Uh, 
So again, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Gladius. This is a um, what Professor Lombardi alludes to, a Pilot 200 on steroids. It's a stiff polymer jacketed wire like the Pilot 200, but now incorporated with Acton, uh, te technology, which allows better st 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 steerability. Um, it tracks long segments uh, of CTO body with relatively low risk of perforation, but on the other end, high risk of subintimal tracking. You can also use this wire to get out of the subintimal track by performing a last technique by limited integrate subintimal tracking, or very conveniently also by delivering a stingray balloon and then doing the stick and swap pr procedure with the stiff, uh, uh, stiff um, uh, the polymer wire, or even use it to re-enter with types of devices like the double lumen. It also forms a good knuckle if you want to perform any type of dissection or a start technique. And even so, it is in my book when all hope is lost. At the end of the procedure, when antegrade has filled and retrograde has filled, start over from the beginning with a gladius wire, and you might even be able to obtain success. And even if, if that doesn't work, it's, it's part of the investment. Also, a new more uh, stiff penetrative wire, which is in my toolbox now, is the Estada. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. This is basically sort of a Confianza Pro 20 or 40, but much less steerable than the Confianza Pro 12. But it's very convenient for very tough lesions where Confianza Pro 12 uh, fails. It's also very good to stick out of stingray balloons in very calcified segments uh, to get re-entry, for example, in the post-bypass patients. But it obviously must be used with caution because this wire will go anywhere. So um, which wire to choose? This is a very simplified scheme by Dr. Brilakis. You basically start a procedure with a soft polymer jacketed wire, like a Fielder XDA or a Fielder XDR. If, you, if that fails and you know the course of the artery, either by angio uh, or by CT, for example, you go to stiff penetrative wires like the Gaia family or Confiance Pro 12. But if you don't know the course of the artery, you don't want to perforate, you'll take a stiff polymer jacketed wire. This is traditionally the Pilot 200, but now more and more in my practice, it's the Gladius wire. So it all starts basically with soft polymer jacketed wires. These navigate you through loose, loose tissue tracking or can pick up micro channels within uh, the fielder family. Uh, and this is ba basically such an example. It all starts with double arterial access. We have a clear cap, a short segment, a clear landing zone, and no real retro options. You start with a microcatheter, which is mandatory in each procedure, as Combus will tell you. Take a soft polymer jacketed wire, in this case a Fielder XDA, and just navigate yourself through the body of the CTO. A very simple CTO, but it needs to adhere to the rules of, of basic CTO procedures. But also, when it gets more difficult, integrate wiring starts with soft polymer jacketed wire. This is a JCTO score of three. Um, it's very calcified, as you, as you can see, with the double arterial excess. Um, so trying this just with a soft polymer jacketed wire can just easily gain you success. And this is the first two or floor of a Fielder XDA that passes. So even if you think this lesion is going to be very tough, it may be worthwhile just to probe it with soft polymer jacket wire for one or two minutes, it will frequently bring you still uh, success, even if you think you need a variety of dissection reentry techniques or the retrograde approach. Also, polymer jacketed wires are extremely safe. This is a slide of James Pratt. If you don't know the course of the artery, if the artery is long, if the artery is calcified, if you take a stiff wire, the likelihood of perforating are extremely high. If you take polymer jacketed wires, either being soft but also being stiff, the chances of perforating are extremely low. So for patient safety benefit, uh, uh, polymer jacketed wires are much safer than stiffer wires. When is a lesion too long to start with soft polymer jacketed wire? The answer is never. This is a patient uh, with a CTO of the RCA with good collaterals. You might want to go re retrograde first, especially because the lesion length is 10 centimeters. But, but now by simply probing with a soft polymer jacketed wire, just for one minute, and this is the first store fluo, um, you can get through. The chances of this being successful are less than 10%, but the time invested in such a procedure is just a few minutes and one wire. So it, in, in a lot of cases, it's still worthwhile if you have a good integrate cap to try this procedure. So the algorithm that we're used to 
uh, analyzed, whether that be in the hybrid or any other uh, the algorithm, it tells you that if a lesion length is more than 20 centimeters, you should adopt to dissection reentry techniques. I think with the evolution of wires nowadays, this is an old scheme, this must be abandoned. Lesion length is, in my opinion, no longer a, a reason to abandon uh, wire escalation, whether it's anterograde or retrograde. Once you end up in the subintimal space, then convert to dissection reentry, but not on forehand in most cases. So if the soft polymer jacketed wires fail and you know the course of the artery, you go to the Gaia family, which has re revolutionized um, the PCI CCTO and wire technology. And again, nowadays, the, the Gaia Next family. These are very directable wires, um, very easy to navigate you through the CTO body and to stay intraplaque for as long as you can. So this is an example of a PCI CTO of the circumflex where we started in an anti-grade fashion. You see the microcatheter, you see the soft polymer jacketed wire, and the soft polymer jacketed wire ends up in the subintimal space within seconds. You bring up the microcatheter, you exchange the soft polymer jacketed wire for a Gaia wire, and you can see it that it re-enters from the subintimal space into the true lumen with that pop. You see the direct pop. Then you're in the true lumen, so this is a, basically wire escalation from soft polymer to a stiff intermediate type of wire, in this case, the Gaia second. Um, another example of, of such a case is, um, is this patient with a CTO of the R RCA. Again, I would like to, to tell you that soft polymer jacketed wires are the way to go first. This is a soft polymer jacketed wire, Fielder XDA. We end up in the subintimal space. We switch to a Gaia a wire, and now look how differently the Gaia wire behaves as opposed to the soft polymer jacketed wire. It navigates towards a, 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 a tiny early PD branch, which we're now into. This way, you, you have already conquered half of the CTO. You bring the microcatheter there. You exchange for a workhorse wire. You bring down a double lumen catheter, in this case, a Sasuke, for, to, to get yourself back into the body of the CTO. And now start again with soft polymer jacket wire, in this case, a filler XDR, to navigate you through the further. So it's up escalation, down escalation, use of multiple wires and multiple MCs, to, uh, which Cambus will tell you a little bit more about in the next, uh, uh, that next talk. And to finish the case. So having knowledge of these wires is extremely important. And you don't need to know that many wires, just about six or eight or 10, and you have your toolbox com complete. Also, we must not forget uh, that there are alternatives um, to wire te technology alone. And this is predominantly with reentry devices, in this case, the Stingray balloon. This is a case where the soft polymer jacketed wire ended up in the subintimal space. And instead of doing techniques like, like parallel wiring, et cetera, we popped in a Stingray balloon. Stingray is in the subintimal space. And now you take a stiff wire, like a Confianza Pro 12, or if that fails, an Astato wire to get yourself a reentry. In this case, it's called a stick and drive maneuver. You stick out of the side port, you drive it into the artery, and even with a Stato 20 or 40, this can be done safely and in an efficient manner. So not only staying stick to wire technology alone, never forget about the other tools that we have, double lumen catheters, triple lumen catheters, stingray balloons to help you get success. This is also that sometimes we don't need always wires. They, for example, instant occlusion, we can use blunt dissection devices like the crossbars, uh, which has been popularized in the United States and in the, in the UK, or are disseminating now throughout the world. Um, in this case, you can see that the crossbars pops through uh, the instant occlusion, which tends to stay within the struts, easily navigating you um, uh, to stay within the true lumen. So not always wires are, are needed to solve a case. Um, and in, in this case, um, a cross pass is good for instant occlusion. This is not only in the hybrid algorithm. We now also see disseminated in the Asian Pacific algorithm. This is a slide of um, Dr. Chuchikane, and uh, now being adopted that the cross pass is, uh, is now indicated for instant occlusion, but also the Stingray balloon is now entering the field in Asia to get reentry. I think all these algorithms nowadays Tend, tend to become more similar. And there's a new paper coming out by Dr. Brilakis in Jack soon about the fusion of all the worldwide uh, schemes to come to a more consensus about how we should approach these CTOs.
This is very successful. This is the recharge database led by Jo Dens from Belgium in 1,214 patients showing success rate of almost 90% with 75% of these cases being wire cases. So wiring has become extremely successful. And this is, this is um, not only so in the low JCTO scores, but still holds true in the higher JCTO scores with advancement of wire technology, success rate in even more difficult cases tends to go up. However, this is all anti-grade work, but we also have the retrograde approach if anti-grade fails or we have no cap to start with. And retrograde wiring can be relatively more easy because the distal part of the cap tends to be more soft. We can use bypass grafts, septals, and epicardials to, uh, to navigate ourselves way through. And, as, and actually, you only need four wires if you start a retrograde um, uh, uh, the, the program in your toolkits. This is basically an Asai Sion wire as a workhorse to get retro. If that fails, you can go to polymer jacketed wires like a Sion Black, or if you have high, highly tortuosity and you want to navigate through a Fieldrex DR. But I think one wire we should um, not forget, and it's been relatively novel, not for Japan, but for the rest of Europe, is the Suo Serial 3, which has really revolutionized the way you can pass tortuosity uh, through very difficult sub, um, um, segments. Uh, not only septals, but, um, but specifically the epicardials. This is a caravel into a right ventricle branch with high tortuosity, where it feeds the LAD. And now you can see how easy it is for an even incompetent operators just to navigate a SUO through. And the biggest advantage of the SUO is that the SUO tends to break more easily than the epicardial does. So chances of perforating with SUO are extremely small as opposed to more stiff wires um, like the Fielder XTR. So even crossing epicardials nowadays can be more safe um, also in the less experienced hands. So I'll show you a case where anti-grade wiring failed and successful retrograde wiring was an option. This is a case where we have good septals on a CTO of the right coronary artery. We started anti-grade with soft polymer jacketed wire, ended up in a subintimal space. And instead of doing all sorts of difficult maneuvers, this is a C on wire just to get ourselves through those septals, which is very easy. It's not magic. Anybody can do it. We advanced the microcatheter, and now that same soft polymer jacketed wire, the Fielder XDA, navigates from the true lumen to the true lumen and enters the guide so you can externalize and finish the case. An example of where anti-grade wiring may end up in the sub space and retrograde wiring from true to true is more easy. Um, also, when you have proximal gap ambiguity and you don't know where to start, obviously starting with soft polymer jacketed wires is not an option if you don't even have a clear cap. So some cases are still um, uh, dealt with in a primary retrograde approach. These have good septals. Again, you need the good tips and tricks and, um, and the clear tools. This is a 150 Corsair Pro. You do a tip injection. You see the course of the artery. This is a simple C on wire, which will which will um, get you through that septal up into the LED. And now you have solved the proximal gap and amb ambiguity by going retro, you end up to the proximal cap. And I want you to know that retrograde wiring is exactly the same as anti-grade wiring. Soft polymer jacketed wire, stiff type of wires if you know where you're going, penetrative wires. And in this case, we needed a Confianza Pro 12 to get through this cap. Uh, make sure with IFS that we entered into the into the le left main prior to the exit of the of the circumflex and deal with this case. But again, retrograde wiring uh, escalation is exactly the same as anti-grade wire escalation once you're there at the distal cap. So these retro cases um, they can they can uh, be quite difficult. This is a patient with an ipsy collateral. We frequently use to get retro tip injections to see. Uh, where, where the artery is going. In this case, tip injection really helps. Either one of the four wires, uh, in this case, this is a SUO, will get you through um, that, uh, that, uh, that tortuous uh, epi. Small microcatheter like a caravel, which will, Compass will allude to, will get you through. And then wire escalation starts again. And again, soft polymer jacketed wire failed. Gaia failed in this case. And we needed a Confianza Pro 12 to puncture that cap and get re-entry, as we can see right here. This is Confianza Pro 12. 
going into the left main, exchanging for a workhorse wire to navigate ourselves through that left main, check with IFAS where we had re reentry and finish the case. So uh, dependent on your skill set, you can elaborate on more difficult and difficult cases, um, but wire technology is key to help you achieve that purpose. So in conclusion, I'd like to state that integrate wire escalation is and will be the mainstay of PCI CCTO. It's 50% in third year um, luminary centers, but it's going up uh, to 60 to 70% due to wire technology. Success rate has gone up tremendously and wire choices have been extremely simplified. But please be aware of the updates. There are multiple vendors these days introducing wires and updates also within the Asahi families are there. Most recent examples like the Gladius, the Suo, and the Astato should be kept in mind to deal with your cases. Retrograde wire escalation is easy and can be more successful than integrate uh, wiring. And please be familiar with alternative techniques when wiring fails, such as dissection reentry techniques, and have those um, uh, tools like the Stingray balloon on your shelf to save you from these cases. Thank you. And I'd like to give the word back to Dr. Yamane. Paul, thank you very much for your excellent talk. Uh, with regarding your uh, technique, how do you fill the gap between that the, uh, your estimate before the procedure and what you have done in terms of the guide wiring? Because even if you read the CT scan before the procedure, sometimes physical characteristics of the CTO is quite different before you touch on the guide wire. So how could you feedback your experience and your plan into that. Yeah, that's a, that's a very important question. And I, I think it's uh, not to get stuck in failure mode. I think that's the that's the summary of what I'd like to say. So um, if you have a plan, fine. But if the plan fails, uh, switch quick. So Elliot Smith always says, uh, fail fast and switch quick. Um, you, you, I mean, you need, you, you know that you have all these different wires, different techniques, different strategies. So don't invest too much time in something that's about to fail and then uh, switch because you'd like to escalate through all the possibilities of tackling a CTO, uh, both in wire technology, microcathode technology and strategies uh, within 90 minutes or so. Uh, CTO should, should on average not take more than 90 minutes. Um, it's rare in our, our lab. So don't get stuck in failure mode. It's a very good message. Thank you, uh, Dr. Yamane. Okay, thank you very much. It's a uh, first rate and that the uh, superb uh, advice for everybody involved in the CTO. Thank you very much, Paul. Now I'd like to introduce the uh, uh, Canvas Matayuki, uh, who is uh, uh, most voluminous and the talented CTO operators in the world. And uh, probably uh, he will teach us from the super duper technique, as well as a very much basic techniques for exploring the how to manage the CTO with a microcatheter. Canvas, please. Thanks a lot, Masahisa. <clears throat> so, well, I will talk about the contemporary microcatheter toolbox and I will concentrate specially on the SI toolbox of microcatheters and not on dual lumen microcatheters. So the focus today uh, those are my conflict of interests. So the, uh, the focus today will be on the Corsair, the Corsair uh, Pro XS and the Caravel. And um, in actually in 2010, the implementation of the reverse card was extended, right, by uh, the Corsair. And I think this was a big revolution. And, uh, um, and also this paper was published in Czech Intervention in February 2010, and it really could increase success rate in complex CTO PCI. Well, in Europe, finally, in 2011, the Corsair was launched. The, this microcadita gave us really a good opportunity for retrograde options. And uh, then in 2016, uh, uh, Caravel came up, uh, helped us a lot, like uh, Paul Knapp already uh, explained, especially in tiny epicardial connections, but also very tiny tortuous septal connections. And uh, then the next evolution came, which was the Corsair Pro in 2017, with a better torqueability, a more flexible tip, actually, and uh, um, yeah, a more resistant tip uh, uh, for also for uh, getting more into calcified lesions. 
And uh, last but not least, in uh, uh, last year, the Corsair Pro XS was launched. Now we'll focus a little bit also on this microcatheter. So when you think about the standard microcatheter, which is the Corsair Pro, uh, you actually can use it for complex PCI, so in very tight calcified lesions, whenever you need really big support, actually. But uh, it's also an excellent device for anti-grade CTO body crossing and also for retrograde CTO collateral tracking, especially when you have a septal collateral connection and you need support to, for your retrograde gyre, uh, wire for uh, having a more fibrotic, calcifibrotic uh, tissue to penetrate, also from retrograde. Well, the Caravel is a completely different design microcatheter. For sure, if they are not so calcified uh, uh, lesions, you can use the Caravel very nicely also for complex PCI, actually, as a, as a very elegant microcatheter. But uh, we don't use it too much in really uncrossable anti-grade uh, 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 calcified lesions because the tip is a little bit more flexible than in the Corsair, and therefore it can also be attached when you over-rotate the device. This has to be uh, uh, not latched. So for the anti-grade CTO and uh, body crossing, it's still uh, uh, when you have uh, not calcified lesions, it's still a very good uh, possibility. But the real impact of the Caravel is the collateral channel tracking, especially the tortuous um, epicardial crossing. So when you uh, take everything together, you have here the Crosshair Pro, uh, uh, which uh, have a good crossability, support, and talkability. And you have the Carvel with the benefit of low profile and trackability and guide wire man maneuverability. So taken together now, the hybrid of those uh, different, uh, uh, let's say, uh, advantages uh, uh, with torqueability, low profile and trackability, uh, has the Crosshair Pro XS. Well, it's, uh, let's say, a hybrid between the Crosshair Pro and the Caravel. And um, the good thing about it is that um, with its low profile, uh, you can track even smaller channels, but you have still the opportunity for uh, to torque this device, right? So like the Corsair. So which means that uh, once you think about the microcatheter positioning for complex PCI and uh, main uh, characteristics which are required are low profile and trackability, I think uh, the Caravel and the Corsair Pro are uh, very good devices, the Corsair Pro especially when you need higher support and trackability. Uh, regarding the um, microcatheter positioning of the um, when you need something for the CTO crossing with crossability, talkability, and support, I think the Crosshair Pro is an, a very good microcatheter. But if you need a lower profile device, then the, um, the Crosshair Pro XS is a very good alternative device. So, regarding the anatomy that you have uh, once you cross CTOs, you often uh, are going retrograde via septal channels, right? And the septal channels can have uh, uh, different diameters and uh, they are from 0 to 3 French, CC uh, 0 to 1, to going up to CC2 and uh, can be even very large, right? So you should use a device where you can really torque it and also has a good trackability. And this uh, can be done by the Crosshair Pro when the septals are not very small and not too tortuous, but if they're really tiny and tortuous septals, you have actually to use the Crosshair Pro XS, which is the better device for this kind of circumstances. Regarding the epicardial tracking, uh, here you need a different subset of device, right? So uh, here you also need a load profile microcatheter with a good trackability. And this actually um, can be the Crosshair Pro X. And if it's even more tiny channels, the Carvel would be the choice. So this is my personal preference of different microcatheters at the moment for septal crossing and epicardial crossing. And uh, for the septals, I really like to have a rotatable, torqueable microcatheter. And from the SI group, I really prefer the Corsair and Corsair Pro X for the septals. For the epicardials, actually, once they're really big epicardials, the Corsair Pro X is an excellent device for that. 
from Asai and uh, CC1 collaterals, you can use the Carvel. For sure, there are also different other devices uh, from Teleflex, from Boston, so which can be also uh, used, and many companies, also Terumo. Uh, but focusing on the Asai products, uh, I'm, uh, I can tell you that the, those are have a really uh, good uh, devices for these kind of scenarios. So let's uh, think about the SEPTA crossing here. Uh, well, the SEPTA crossing uh, with the Corsair, and I will show you uh, an example. Here you see a SEPTA crossing with a channel dilator, and what you can see is the rotational force, and then I wait with the, uh, to give the pressure actually towards the, <clears throat> the device. Can you see? So it's a rotation, and then I, I give push, and what happened is the microcatheter is going continuously over this uh, torture span where there was a lot of freak, uh, resistance there. So it's a rotation, counterclockwise and clockwise rotation. And then I give a little bit push on the wire and I wait till the microcatheter goes forward. So here you see a little bit of different scenario. It's a not so complex passage from the septal. It's here a CM blue wire. The CM blue wire actually just uh, um, yeah is navigated forward uh, with um, yeah with a septal surfing we call it. So we just uh, 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 analyze the septal construction and feel if there is any resistance. I can remember that even I think Paul was one of the commenters just during this uh, case, and uh, then the, the the wire just went through. Through it. So if it's so easy to pass the wire, almost the passage of the microcatheter is also easy. So you can use a really good microcatheter with good backup for the wire. This is the Corsair. You see that uh, Colm and Etri is holding the, the, the guide a little bit because the backup of the left radial was a bit le less. And I fixed the microcatheter with my two hands. The one is rotating and the other is pushing the device. So if you don't feel any resistance, you can even rotate the microcatheter relatively in a fast manner. But if you feel resistance, just make slow movements with the microcatheter tip and uh, try to uh, uh, give a little bit more uh, trans transition force from the microcatheter towards the tip. So take your time not to over-rotate the microcatheter because this is actually what can happen. If the tip is fixed, even in the septal, and you start to over-rotate, sometimes in bending, the microcatheter can even rupture, right? This was a rupture into the right ventricle. It was not a problem. Uh, and... Uh, for the patient, actually, but it should not happen, actually, in, in, in epicardial connections, right? So do not over-rotate this. Then go back with a smaller device, with a more thinier device, with a device like the Crosshair Pro XS or even the Caravel. And another uh, thing is where you should not over-rotate the devices is when once you get stuck in calcium, right? This was a case, a very calcified RCA, but here you can see the wire, the uh, confiance at 12 was not able to penetrate. I want to rotate the microcardita towards the confiance at tip. What happened was that uh, you can see what happened. The tip in the calcium was getting fixed and entrapped with the wire, so I had to bring everything out. And this can happen when you over-rotate in calcium the tip. So I didn't have uh, Corsair tip loses uh, so um, uh, based on that. But what I had actually was that the, the uh, uh, wire is really, uh, uh, you cannot detach the wire from the microcatheter when you over-rotate. So therefore, once you come in the situation where you feel a lot of resistance, always check if the wire is still free and uh, you have not a resistance and higher resistance on the wire because this gives you the indication that probably the tip is going to be destroyed and uh, uh, damaged. Well, coming now to the other part, which is uh, more the, um, uh, yes, the tinier septal crossing part. And I will show you where I use um, a device, the Corsair Pro X in a scenario over a uh, last remaining lemur, and I show you why I use this microcardita as well. So this is the uh, Corsair Pro X with a new kinker shaft, which uh, means that you have a, a 2.1 French distally, and um, then uh, you have also 14 braidings, uh, and so it's very good rotatable towards the tip and even tiny, right? So you have 2.1 one French of the distal shaft and a strong backup from the proximal shaft with 2.9 French. So, well, um, we, you can use this device in 6, 8, or 7 French, depends on what you need additionally, uh, uh, but it's possible to take, uh, to, to um, let's say, trap it out in 6 French as well. 
So here we have a complex CTO with a Crosshair Pro X. It's going over left memory, so very long way uh, for the device. Here you see some spasm as well, but uh, you don't want to have too much ischemic events. And here you see how the Crosshair Pro XS can just pass the collateral, but here you do have less support from the Lima because we were on left brachial. So it takes the time, right? You need to give the device the time, but with pushability alone with the car wheel, it might end up that you might lose the position of the guide, which uh, uh, which has very low backup force here. So therefore, you need a device which has also a backup which you can rotate. And here you can see it's possible to go over this whole Lima, over the septal, over the RCA, and finally end up for an externalization and uh, final stenting. So this is uh, possible over this uh, really uh, uh, long a very complex scenario and uh, still it was a very calcified CTO so you have all of these uh, uh, characteristics you would need which means trackability, trackability and still uh, uh, enough uh, uh, backup for the wire to make this re reverse card in calcified scenarios. So coming now to the uh, let's say epicardial scenarios here and uh, uh, the epicardial, especially the small ones, there the carvel is the uh, the, the microcathedra of choice, as Paul Knappen already also showed us. So you know, with this kind of connections, which in the past were probably a little bit more problematic, now the Suicide Free technology is the excellent wire to go. It's a very safe wire, as Paul Knappen also showed us, and you can see with the carvel, you just go through it without any resistance. So it's a very very, very safe opportunity to have a retrograde wire on place. So for sure, we can use these devices, this combination also for more complex scenarios, especially if I might focus again on also the sewer serif free because I think it's a great combination and we all agree uh, here. I think that sewer serif free with the Caravel is a great option for epicardial uh, collaterals and here you can see what the suicide free is possible to do nowadays it's excellent example and the car will can just follow here without any big problem uh, and this is a, a very tiny collateral connection in a patient with a severe renal failure so we try to use a less contrast if possible with super selective injection and also here the combination works very well and the car will can track this channel without damaging the channel and this is very important so um, let's say uh, finalizing the, those three devices. I think when you need a microcatheter with a lot of support, actually wire support, because you have a very calcified long CTO actually, and you have a good channel, you need a, a microcatheter which has a great pushability, a great crossability, and is in a, with a good torque response towards the tip. This would be the Crosshair Pro. If you have very tiny channel, and uh, you have problems with the trackability and there are torches, you can just, and you have a good backup from your retrograde gear, the Carvel, and especially on the epicardials, would be the microcathedra of choice because you have a great flexibility, trackability, and the, you have a very nice inner grading. The wire response is very good in this device. So I think for uh, more complex scenarios and still smaller channels, the, and uh, so more uh, complex uh, CTO lesions where you still need a little bit wire support and also um, you need a more uh, possible for trackability uh, and you have less backup support from the guide, I think the Crosshair Pro X is a good alternative and a good uh, um, um, let's say hybrid device of both of it and the big advantage is that you can also torque it it's a, a very good torqueable uh, microcatheter so i hope that i could give you a little bit explaining uh, explanation of all of these devices and a little bit also my personal view of those devices and uh, i think we still have some minutes uh, which are open for discussion thank you very much Thank you very much, Canvas. Uh, probably uh, this is a reminder that if you ask that the uh, difference, how to <coughs> control the carabiner and uh, Corsair XS, probably which is the most important part of the uh, technical point. Yeah, that's a very, thank you so much, Masahisha. It's, it's very important actually. 
what you should understand is that the Caravel itself has a very, very good torque response. So which means that once you rotate the Caravel 360 towards the tip, the tip will do the same, right? It will go directly with your response, which means, one, the Caravel is fixed in calcium or somber, and you, you torque, so the transmission between the tip and the shaft uh, has a huge stress, right, regarding your power on rotation. So this might lead to a detachment of the tip. So the user should understand that you should not rotate this device once you have calcified uh, lesions. It behaves a little bit different in epicardials, right? So when you have really epicardials and you have a lot of torsity and the only push is uh, not available because you are probably on the radiopaque part of the suocero free, you might use a little rotation, but only 180 degree or maximum 270, not too much, and rotate also counterclockwise again, so you might have a little bit better trackability. This is the big difference between the Corsair Pro XS. The Corsair Pro XS can be rotated in a nice manner as we know it from the Corsair, and which means that you can rotate it uh, several times and the tip uh, response, so the torque to, uh, response towards the tip is not one to one, it's probably five to 10 to one, which means five to 10 rotation that the tip is rotating one time. And this uh, uh, explains you why uh, you actually uh, can also use this device a little bit better um, in, let's say, where you uh, have a little bit more fibrotic issue. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Paul, uh, do you have some comment? Because you have also extensive experience with uh, microcatheter. Yeah, so I, I basically want to give my compliments uh, to Cambers for this great overview and also highlighting the fact that you have three types of microcatheter. You, you have, you have the, the default ones, the bulky ones, uh, being in this case for the Asahi family, the Corsair Pro. You have the sort of intermediate type, which is still braided, so are still torqueable, uh, but slimmer in device, which is the, the, the Corsair XS. And now going from 2.7 French to 2.2 French. And then if that doesn't work and you need something very flimsy, very, very de delicate, then you have the Caravelle, which is the 1.4 French device. Um, basically, you only need three of these devices in your toolbox. And as Cambus also alluded to, we have multiple vendors from Teleflex and uh, from Boston. And it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really, really matter which which microcatheter you use, but they fall into these three of the categories: the bulky ones, the intermediate type ones, and the very slim ones. And if you have one of each types on your on your toolbox, uh, then you're good. Um, in addition to the, to these types of microcatheter, you need sort of plaque modification microcatheters, uh, which in my lab is the Tornus, also from Asahi. Or you could use um, um, a Turnpike Gold, for example, or Turnpike Spiral from the from um, uh, the Teleflex company. So, in addition to these microcatheters, a a plaque modifying um, uh, the catheter like a Tornus is 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 very handy to have in the toolbox as well. Thank you very much, Great. Paul. As you alluded, that the, uh, even the one microcatheter uh, f falls into the some failure mode, probably uh, it's a better to switch to the other mode is a hidden message, I guess. So thank you very yeah, much. And I, would, I would also like to say that, that that sometimes sometimes the logic doesn't really compute. I have had exactly. cases where the Corsair Pro didn't go, and then I took a Caravelle, and the Caravelle didn't go either, and then I took a Corsair Pro XS, and the Corsair Pro XS went. Whereas from an, an intellectual point of view, the Corsair Pro XS is more bulky than the Caravelle, Yet sometimes you cannot uh, predict the physiology and the anatomy yep. and just try something else if something fails. Even if something is bigger, it might still pass where something smaller didn't. Okay, thank you very much. It's a superb, excellent uh, advice from the uh, specialist. So it's time to summarize. Um, probably uh, thank you very much for the excellent talk regarding the CTO guide wiring, as well as microcatheter usage. Probably uh, one of the summary of the slide would be when you know the vessel course, uh, probably you can step up the very stiff guide wires, such as a Gaia or the Confianza Pro, 
Uh, this is a, one of the example for the heavy calcified RCA long CTO. But when you use uh, Gaia Next as well as integrate as well as a retrograde approach, uh, probably you can use it in a very flexible manner, reaching the very good end of the procedure outcome. Whereas if you don't know the vessel course, uh, probably you may start with a very soft polymer jacketed wire such as the XTR, but then you may use the, this is a, a Miracle Neo 3 gram, which is like a ultimate broad 3 gram and ending up with the retrograde outcome, but retrograde Gaia Next 2 actually rendezvous in the integrated carrier microcatheter so in this case, we result in the superb outcome for the procedure as well. So outcome would be the uh, probably a uh, uh, very important part, but the take home message will be some technological development has eyewitness for our procedure, but like a channel dilator, the Corsair XS, we have advantage for using those specialty device at the same time, we have eyewitness um, guide wire development, such as a feeder XTR to the Gaia Next. And surely we must be always a better way to solve the difficult problems, such as the original cart to the guide catheter extension reverse cart. That way we can have the bright future in our hand. And hopefully uh, this will be of great help for everybody who aspire to be proficient in CTO PCI. Thank you very much for attention.